Hello, LinkedIn. Welcome to Data Ki Baat. So I was reading this book uh, by, by Laurie Silverman, Wake Me Up When the Data is Over. So apt, right? It's so relevant. Is data going to be over? Not really. It is going to be really much more bigger than what we are seeing today. And there would be a need for really able to manage that in a better way. And that's that's on the topic that you know, I'm going to talk about today. Uh, that is when this uh, new report that came from Government of India, which I took it on me to share in the form of a series uh, to everyone uh, so that it can be interpreted uh, from my platform, Tedaki Bath. My attempt would be to really make this really simple for, for you so that you can get uh, some meaning out of it and then see how you can utilize that. So this is the uh, episode number two. Um, and in this episode, I am going to talk about the first chapter of the report, which really talks about data and its impact. The impact could be economical, uh, social, or cultural. So when we are talking about impact, right, it's not only, uh, you cannot always see it as like a positive impact. There could be a negative impact of data as well. So uh, impact basically talks about some kind of a change that certain event is bringing. And here we are talking about volume of data, the huge volume of data. If you read the report, it stressed upon so much data that is there available to us and what are the impact of that data. So before any delay, I would uh, just add a couple of slides here so that we can talk through this. So in the last episode, I talked about, I gave a you know, quick introduction about what's really cooking. And it is all about non-personal data governance framework that government of India has come, come up with. It, it is basically talking about how do you manage the data? How do you regulate it better? Because uh, it's impacting the lives. We, we see there are a lot of use of data uh, you know, uh, to enhance the services, to, to really make sure that uh, we are able to use the data to derive some meaning out of it and then provide the better services than we used to. So uh, all of those. And uh, obviously, it has been really led by the committee of experts. They, they, uh, they really spoke to many industry experts and talked about how this, uh, you know, this can be really put in place. What are the different things need to be considered? So what is in it? It is basically a 72-page long report. It is still a draft. I wanted to highlight that. And it talks about various challenges uh, that we have with the massive data that we are talking about, uh, how to how to deal with that uh, in the first place. And as we know, right, the data is not going to get over. We will have more of that going forward as well. Then what are the best way to uh, really govern that, regulate that, and use it for the social and you know economical good? So that's the whole uh, crux of the report. And yes, it is. India's uh, attempt to put the uh, regulation and report around non-personal data, but it really considered the global view of it. So with that, I will uh, highlight one more time the various uh, component of the report. Uh, it talks about data trends. This, that is the topic of today. Uh, and then similarly, in the other episodes, I would go ahead and talk about um, uh, non-personal data ecosystem ownership, data as a business, data sharing, data uh, regulatory authority and the technology architecture around it to support that whole ecosystem. So if you really see, it really talks about uh, people aspect, process aspect, and technology aspect, as well as obviously how can we use all of those three to manage the data better. So in today's topic, uh, it is going to be really talking about the huge data set that we are you know, sitting on and we are generating. Then the question is that, what kind of uh, challenges, what kind of uh, you know, impact it brings to the society, to the economy, and to the, to the culture, right? Those are the three aspects that we, we're going to discuss. And also, in the report, I figured that there is a lot of stress uh, around how to extract the value out of those data sets, because uh, that's, there, there would be a lot of value in it. But if you are not able to extract and use it for 
the benefit of society and the country and then economy, then there is there is no good in what you have got, right? So uh, to a point, I know you can always read uh, a lot of other statistics in the report, but uh, these are the few that I just brought in. We are talking about 3 billion smartphone users in the world. Especially two, you know, data point for the India perspective is that it is the second highest smartphone users, you know, in, in the world, right? And then obviously we have a, we are also second in the most populous country. So imagine the need uh, of the time to really think for certain uh, regulation in place to use the huge data set that we are having for all of those, you know, um, maybe a, you know, social project, you know, government project, there is a social programs, uh, uh, our economical benefit, and then companies that we are talking about. We are talking about startup ecosystem, uh, trying to promote the startup, uh, trying to see data as a business, uh, value out of it, in, um, basically mostly data monetization, you, you, you keep hearing about that. So those are the various factors that, that has been discussed in the report. So I have categorized that uh, chapter, which by all means you should go and read yourself, but this is uh, my take, this is Jetaki Bath take on that chapter specifically. So I have categorized it into four aspects here, impact, threat, opportunity, and action, right? So uh, I talked about the volume of data and then what are the impacts of it. So it can be economical, social, and culture. With those impact, right, there would be certainly two things. It cannot be always win-win. It cannot be always positive. There, there has to be, there would be some negativity to it. There would be some irregularities around that because of the volume that we are talking about, because the data uses that we are talking about. So the first thing that uh, report really highlights very well and which we all would acknowledge that um, it's, it created a really a divide. Uh, it created an imbalance because uh, few companies really got into the market early, uh, like a like a like a Facebook or a Google, and they really could capture the bigger chunk of the data. They have bigger data pools. But how about the company who is right right now getting into the market, or they are trying to start using data for the benefit uh, for generating value out of it and all? So there is a huge imbalance uh, out there. Uh, there has to be some uh, you know ways to maintain the balance so that it is, there is no monopoly around it. The second thing is, and very important is, uh, this report talks about is that there, there has to be a method in the madness uh, that we are trying to deal with. Uh, yes, data is there, it is having a huge value, uh, uh, it is high in volume as well, but what are the different ways and means it should be regulated well, so that it doesn't create that threat. In fact, it creates more opportunities. So the whole idea is that, with the impact, how to avoid or minimize the threat and increase the opportunity. That's the whole idea of the report. If you really ask me what is the purpose of the report, it is exactly that. Yes, there is an impact, there would be a threat, but how to minimize the threat and increase the opportunity. So going back to the opportunity section, with this data, right, there is something uh, that key term that you will hear and see in the report is that data business, right? To me, it is, uh, nothing but uh, trying to create a value out of data. First thing, how to monetize that data. So there is a, you know, obviously a good term out there, which is going to be widely used. How to promote uh, uses of data and put uh, it like a business. There are rules to it. And there is a dedicated chapter for that, which I will discuss in my coming episodes. Improvement in services and infrastructure. That could be one of the things which we can, where we can use data to bring those value. Uh, with the data, there is a lot of opportunity coming, and with those opportunities, there would be a lot of employment opportunity as well. So, and then finally, we are not only talking about uh, using the data for the businesses, for the manufacturing, for the services, and infrastructure. We are also talking about how the data can be used for the social good, public good. So, those are the various opportunity. And finally, if you really want to create those opportunity, if you want to realize that opportunity, right? You got to really do and take some actions and that's where this uh, uh i would say report is also trying to uh, you know come up with various uh, you know it has really studied a lot of different frameworks uh, it uh, if you really read the report you will find a lot of uh, good report references right i really went through all of those but uh, you know what the whole idea is that how to make those 
complex report or complex framework simple for people to use, right? It's not that uh, there is only one way of getting value out of data. There are various ways and, and means to get that. Uh, for you, it might be you know certain framework. For me, it might be certain you know uh, my own way because it suits my business or my situation or my context, right? So with that spirit, right? I have tried to uh, obviously read that report thoroughly and came up with a simple uh, tool uh, that's there in the Six Sigma you know, uh, framework. I, I, I'm a uh, certified Six Sigma black belt, so my mind goes uh, and there and see that how can I use, reuse in fact, something that is already available. So to see the value out of data, I have created two page uh, of the slide, uh, which I will flash in, the, uh, in a few moment, uh, which would basically take you through a very simple way of looking at your data supply chain uh, and you would should be able to spot that okay where is the you know where is something you know that you want to really focus and dig more on and then take it as one of the, those action item and put it into a five step process which I will explain in a while and start looking at those values okay so uh, without any further delay I will go to the next slide uh, where we will talk about this simple tool which is there available I'm sure most of you understand this or know this already. It is a simple Six Sigma tool and the name is SIPOC, Supplier, Input, Process and Output. So let's see that how uh, I just you know, tried to put the report uh, which I was reading uh, into a simple way into this framework, right? So the supplier uh, could be your data sources, right? It, it is something that uh, you uh, collect at source or maybe it is your edge devices, maybe it is your you know IoT, or maybe it is your it is your applications, or maybe it is uh, input that user is making in your process, right? So the supplier is a, a source of your data, and how do you collect that those kind of a process? So I combine those two at the supplier level. Maybe you can think the collection process as a separate process as well, but not to complicate that. Let's you know uh, look at that uh, further. So. And then input could be basically the data that you need. Understand, scoping and relevancy is very important out here. You cannot deal with the volume of data that we have got in front of you. You cannot do that at one go. So you have to really understand that from my supplier, from my sources, from my collection process, what is that I'm collecting and taking forward. So your input has to be scoped and very much relevant to what you want to achieve out of your process and what value you want to extract out of your process. So that's where the input uh, comes into the picture. Yes, it is simple to look at, but you have to put your you know, thought process around that. And there is a lot of collaboration opportunity with a business and IT together. So again, data sources, data collection as a supplier, and then data, which is required for you to deliver the value is something that you want to you know, take uh, as a next step. Um, my batteries. Okay, so next step is how do you take that input which you have very well scoped and you know that it is relevant for my process or my value creation exercise. You will basically start looking at and trying to analyze that. You would start putting all of those AI, ML, uh, you know, analysis processes, uh, you know, uh, statistical analysis, and all those things at. In, in your process section and try to create those value. You will not only try to create the value, you will also look at how do I then deliver that value to the end user. So in the process section, you have to think about those three steps. You have to analyze your scope data and relevant data that you want to you know, use in for your process. You have to generate the information, create that information, and you have to also think about how do you deliver that piece to the end user. And the next one is basically the value that you actually wanted to look at. And now, once you have the value, you have to see that how it is, you know, getting to your consumer. From there, your feedback loop starts because you have delivered the value. Consumer is going to, or the end user is going to use that, and they might probably like it or may may not like it. And then you have to make sure that there is a feedback mechanism out of it, so that there is a loop going back to again, uh, you know, for you to be able to, you know, think through and start looking at that. Okay, was there something wrong at the data source level or a collection level? Did I really scope it well? Did I really analyze it well? And then finally that loop keeps on continuing, right? 
So uh, in the report, there is something called nine steps framework. I just converted the same thing into a simple SIPOC process, which is very, very easy to use and visualize. So try that and let me know how you, you know, feel. To me and to data Kibath, simple is still the best. So with that, the next step. So now you have done that, uh, you know, data supply chain analysis, and you have seen that what is that one piece of data you want to use and different ways and, you know, uh, in, in which you want to analyze, you can really take those input and, you know, start and refine that in a, in a process called uh, value creation process. So finding the business value, attaching it to the measurable outcome, and then achieving it is the goal for data, right? Why do you collect the data, right? There is all, There has to be a reason for why you are collecting. There has to be a reason that why you are scoping it, right? So business value creation is the goal. And you should always be able to define that from the eyes of business, from the eyes of end user. So that's where the process of defined comes into the picture. So in the define, you will basically try to answer those why many times, at least five times as per the six sigma, right? Five whys. You have to ask that question, why, 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 why? And then you basically, you know, try and see that, okay, now I will, you know, I, I'm very well defined the process. I know what value I want. I also know the purpose that why I want to do this process. And then you move to the next uh, you know, step, which is nothing but a measure. If you cannot measure, you cannot improve. You, you know that, right? It's a very well you know, known, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, saying, right? So if you see that you want to achieve this value out of it, you should be able to know that, can you measure that? How is the current situation? As is, is something that you got to understand and measure and know that. Once you know that, you will be able to basically understand that, okay, where I, am I and where I want to go? And then the next step would be to really analyze that process. And then once you are able to analyze it, you would have certain recommendation to improve the as is process, which you definitely don't like, or maybe it is not optimal for you to the next level by improving that uh, using those recommendations. And then that that improved place also should 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 be able to measure that because you want to compare that okay this is my as is process this was at certain value and i want to you know now measure it after improvement and see whether i have improved or not and then similarly you will go back and so this loop also continues and if you really notice the biggest you know point here and also very relevant to the topic that we are discussing today is your control and governance all of this has to be really connected with the processes that you are trying to follow. Control and governance go hand in hand and together. So that is why I kept it in center. Uh, this is something that I you know, thought through and then put. So control and governance basically keeps on giving feedback to all of your processes like define, measure, improve, and analyze. This way, you will most certainly be able to achieve the value out of it because it is very simple to use. You will not bog down by a lot of other different framework and thought processes around it. Uh, it is time tested as well because you cannot beat this five, you know, five step over there because almost all the frameworks, some or other way, in a different ways and means, using the same underlying framework. So try that also and then let me know how you feel. So with that, uh, as a takeaway, right, uh, and then crux of that uh, one chapter that we wanted to discuss from our, uh, you know, report uh, that is published by the government of India, non-personal data of, you know, framework is that data is going to be present. It's not going to go away. The volume is going to increase much, much, you know, in a, in a very uh, faster way going forward as well. But then you have to still extract the value out of it. So you have to change your approach. You have to change your question, right? Instead of using and relying on trying to handle the entire volume, you have to pick up what is the value that you want to create pick only those piece, work on your scoping and relevancy well, define your process, measure it, analyze it, and improve it. So that way you can you know, keep the you know, uh, when your value creation cycle uh, you know, uh, with your simple, you know, simple and easy to follow framework. And then do not forget, you have still have to do that you know, data value chain analysis or sub data supply chain analysis in the form of SIPOC. Okay, so let me know how uh, you, know, you feel about these two approaches. 
and uh, please go ahead and read this chapter and i would love to hear your uh, uh, interpretation as well your take as well this was purely my take on the chapter and not only that i have also suggested couple of you know easy to use practical advices to follow and use it in your day to day data challenges so with that we have come to a stage where we are going to say you know uh, that what is going to be next next is going to be uh, the, the the next chapter of the report which will be uh, going to, uh, which is going to be um, just a moment yes it's going to be defining the non personal data ecosystem uh, i will take that up in my next episode and you know walk you through that process as well okay so uh, what is happening uh, next for data ki baat is that we are trying to uh, pull up a event on 15 august and i you know named it atmanirbhar with data so that's a very you know uh, i would say need of the time uh, we are uh, as a country we are doing lot of things around data we have talked about uh, personal data protection bill we are talking about non personal data governance processes and we have also you know have a vision of being atmanirbhar and what i strongly believe is that without data all of this is not possible so if you want to see india being atmanirbhar self reliant reliant you have to deal with your data uh, you know in a very much governed and regulated way uh, and and that's why i say right if you can master your data you can master your life so uh, do join the event it is on 15th august independence day of india it is a weekend it is a holiday so do you know try to indulge into this you know conversation where you would be able to learn a lot from the various speakers that i am trying to invite and uh, you know learn from them as well in, in in this process so thank you very much for watching data ki baat today and let me know your feedback uh, you know in the comment section or you can just drop me a message where you know i can just click that uh, and then answer your question, your questions okay so thanks very much everyone